Okay, the way that the formula is written is uh, velocity of A, and the way you read this is this way. Velocity of A with respect to B is equal to velocity of A with respect to C plus velocity of C with respect to B. Okay, notice that the two subscripts here, the two inner subscripts have to be the same in order for this to work. So if this is subscript C, this is subscript C, they have to be the same. And you can almost think of it as uh, they kind of cancel each other, and you're left with A, B. So inner subscripts Okay, so what does this mean anyway? Let me, I'm going to show you now that this is, you already know this formula, even though you don't know what it means, but you already naturally know this formula. The easiest example of this is, suppose, you know, like when you go to the airport or something, you get on these belts, and the belts are moving, and you go on top of the belt, and uh, the belt takes you to where you want it to go. So suppose you get on a certain belt. The belt is going at uh, 2 meters per second this way. And you get on it with your luggage. OK. You get on it. Well, you're probably holding one, the luggage, right? So you get on it with your luggage. But you decide that the belt is going too slow. You need to get to your uh, airplane a little faster. So you start walking on your belt at a velocity of uh, 3 meters per second with respect to the belt. So you start walking your, uh, on, on top of the belt. I'm sure you've all done this, right? You go a little bit. You start walking on the belt to speed up your total velocity. What is now your overall effective velocity, velocity with respect to the ground? Five. Now, you've added the two together, right? You basically just applied this formula without knowing it. The way we can write this is call the belt B, call the person P, call the ground G. Those are what's called reference frames. The person is one reference frame, the belt is another reference frame, the ground is another reference frame. The velocity of person B with respect to the ground is what we're interested in. The velocity of person B with respect to the ground. That's equal to the velocity of person B with respect to the belt plus the velocity of the belt with respect to the ground. So notice that this is an application of that formula. The two inner subscripts are the same, in this case belt. And the two outer subscripts equal to this. Velocity of person uh, with respect to the belt is 3 i hat, since it's to the right. Velocity of the belt with respect to the ground is 2 i hat. And the total velocity is then 5 i hat meters per second. Okay, so you already knew the, the formula, but now you're being introduced to the formal way of writing it, you know. Now, later on, when you go to, uh, when you go to uh, physics 4, uh, it's called modern physics, you'll learn about relativity. And uh, in relativity, you will learn the relativistic formula for adding speeds. Uh, let me give it to you now, just so whet your appetite a little bit. This is the relativistic uh, way of uh, adding speeds. You have the velocity of A with respect to C, VCB. You have divided by 1 plus VAC, VCB, divided by speed of light squared. Okay? Now... How would that apply to this case? In this case, you would say this is uh, uh, this is three, this is five, 
1 plus 3 times 5 divided by what? Speed of light squared, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. squared, right? Now, this number is going to be a pretty small number, right? 3 times 5, 15. 15 divided by 9 times 10 to the 16th. Such a small number, pretty negligible when you compare it to 1. So this whole thing is pretty much close to 1, which means 3 and 5 add up to give you 8. The speed, in that case, the speed of light doesn't uh, affect things a lot. But how, how about if the belt was going at close to the speed of light and you were running close to the speed of light? How would they add up? Okay? Let's say the belt was running, the belt was going at 0.8 the speed of light and you were going at 0.6 the speed of light. So those are now fast speeds. What would be your total speed? 1.4 the speed of light? The answer is no. Nothing can even appear to go faster than the speed of light. The universe doesn't prevent that. I, I, I should say the other way. The, the universe doesn't permit that. The universe prevents anybody to go faster than the speed of light or even appears to go faster than the speed of light. You can't. So how would you add the two? 0.6c plus 0.8c over 1 plus 0.6c, 0.8c over c squared. That's going to be the answer. So at the top you're going to have 1.4c. Uh, the bottom you're going to have c, c, c squared cancel. You're going to have 0 0.6, 0 0.8 is 0 0.48, 1.48. One point four C divided by one point four eight, which is a number kind of like point nine something, right? Point nine something like point nine five C. So it almost like C acts like a barrier. Even if the object goes close to the speed of light, you go close to the speed of light, when you add them, you still don't get C. You you can only get point nine something C. Okay? But here on Earth, since our speeds are pretty small, when you add them, you don't even need to apply this relativistic uh, formula because uh, the speed of light is so large compared to the speeds that we, we go at. You see? Okay, now we're, I'm going to apply...